Hello everybody, my name is Christian Swenson and I do videos here on YouTube about autism, autistic consciousness, and life on the autism spectrum. And you know what? You're probably wearing clothes right now. Actually, don't answer that question. <laughs> I don't want any answers to that question. I'm wearing clothes. That's a relief, right? But, you know, it is a bit weird to be on the autism spectrum with clothes, isn't it? Right? Many of you probably feel like, oh, I hate this tag thing on my shirt. I hate shirts like this. I hate bras. I've seen, I mean, I, I don't wear many bras, but I've seen many autistic, uh, at least one autistic YouTuber complain about bras. You know, like, man, the clothes are too tight or the clothes are too loose. I want them tighter. Right? Or maybe I just can't quite get to the middle place between tightness or not. I hate clothes because they're so hot. I hate clothes because they're never warm enough. Right? Oh, I wish I could just wear shorts all the time. I wish I could just wear long sleeves all the time. Like, oh, I'm always too cold. I'm always too hot, right? Clothing is about all of that. And moreover, many of us probably get the feeling like they're going to look look in my drawers, look in my closet. It's like, what on earth do I wear? Like, I have no idea. Analysis paralysis. Too many choices. Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Facebook guy, uh, I have mixed feelings about him, but uh, he wears the same clothes every day. I suspect it's because he's on the spectrum, actually, and that's a thing autistic people can do. I think many of us would be relieved if we could wear the same clothes every day. Uh, it's not just Mark Zuckerberg. Steve Jobs did it. Barack Obama did it, and they do it because it requires fewer choices. And I think autistic people maybe aren't so good with choices. Because we just have to make so many of them all the time that it's like we just want to make as few as possible so we don't get burnt out. And so the Canadian out just came out of my mouth. I don't know why. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, what, what is clothing? And that's the question to ask. Because when we learn what clothing is, what, what this is, we can maybe learn how to relate to it well. I feel like a lot of the times, the reason we as autistic people don't get things is because we don't understand what the things are uh, and, and their function, and their function in a broader context. Well, what is the function of clothing in a broader context? Well, I will say this. They have to do with pressure and temperature, both figuratively and metaphorically. In other words, they have to do with pressure and temperature physically and also socially. In other words, in regard to nature and something like culture. Now, you know, clothing obviously does do something with pressure and temperature, right? You know, cl clothing exerts either some pressure or no pressure at all, and it actually makes you warm, right? It makes you it makes you warm in cold weather and maybe less warm in 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 hot weather, right? And so it does that literally. And we can kind of see that here, right? Is that clothing is a buffer against nature, right? It protects you from nature. It protects you from the cold weather, or from the hot weather, but it also lets you relate to nature because you can't go on hikes without enough weather. Like I've done that before. I've been in the cold without enough clothing, like with like without gloves or without even with 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 a with short sleeves and I basically I mean I don't know probably not I, I felt like I was getting frostbite even though I probably wasn't there and that's the thing I've seen many people on the autism spectrum have I had a student who was on the autism spectrum in college wore shorts every day he was from Texas still it, it's the same kind of thing right you have the sense that you are not adapting to to the world and if you're watching I know I, I'm thinking about you. <laughs> and so, um, uh, I won't say your name. But, um, but you know, it also, it isn't just a buffer between us and nature. It's a buffer between us and culture. Now, what does that mean? How can there be cultural pressure? Actually, we can understand what cultural pressure is, can't we? And cultural temperature. We can make me understand what that is, too. Well, this is peer pressure, right? We wear clothes because of the pressure from our peers. And where, where do we wear clothes in terms of the temperature of our peers? Well, think about the metaphors we use to describe clothing that make you look hot. That's kind of cool. Isn't that interesting? I don't know if that's a thing, 
but I think that's what clothing does. Clothing helps us measure the temperature of a room by like the temperature of the people in the room, like the emotional, social temperature, right? It can be a very hot situation, a very co cool, relaxed situation, right? And so there's a temperature that is kind of emanated from your clothing, a metaphorical temperature, don't get me wrong, but it's still a kind of temperature. And that temperature exerts, in a way, a kind of pressure. But there's another way, if we go back here, that nature is involved with pressure and temperature. Because it's not only the clothes that exert pressure, nature does too. Nature itself has a kind of pressure that it exerts on you. Air pressure, barometric pressure. Isn't that interesting? And what's even more interesting is that there are many teachers of grade school who will swear that in low pressure systems, children act out. Uh, there's this woman, for instance, um, I'll actually just kind of share my screen here. How does that sound? Uh, there you go. Yeah, as you can see here, see, I can do things, um, <laughs> right? Uh, but you can see here that her, her autistic son is much more in your face um, in low pressure systems. She describes this study, I have it actually open right here, where low barometric pressure is associated with an increase in impulsive behaviors. Uh, you can see it here too. This is a book called The, the Autism Prism, I think. I'll, link, I'll give a link to it in the description. It's just a little screenshot I took. Uh, she's describing what I've done here too, but it's also that uh, she describes how some autist some children or adults are actually fixed by rainy weather. So, uh, some, usually the wind gets an autistic person upset. She, as an autistic person, has hidden in her closet, screamed and stimmed when she was at home, especially alone during the win winter weather. I actually don't remember if this is a woman or a man. Forgive me if you're watching this author, if you're actually of the other persuasion. You can see here, right, there's this other thing, right, where autistic people you know, they feel cold in the winter, they're continually peeling off their clothing, etc., etc. Right, they become overheated quickly, taking even moderately hot showers, feel dizzy, lightheaded, report seeing spots, they may need an extraordinarily time to cool down. You may refuse bath water, or that's too warm, or insist on tepid water, or just insist on cold water. Stuff like that. And you might actually remember that uh, I have a practice with this. I take a shower where I have the, the, the shower is cold, but the, uh, the shower is hot, excuse me, but the water that's in the bath as I'm lying down is cold. And so there's this weird mixture of hot and cold where I can get to kind of an equilibrium. And you know, Temple Grandin, the woman who wrote, uh, who kind of revolutionized the cattle industry, perhaps the most famous autistic woman, uh, perhaps the most famous autistic person ever, officially diagnosed, she, uh, when she was in college, built a pressure machine. You know, she would, it would give her pressure when she wanted and, and, and less pressure when she didn't want. And to me, I think that's what that is, is it's giving you the right amount of, of pressure. And I feel like as autistic people, we don't often get there. We don't often get to the equilibrium. And there's an equilibrium in both of these things. There's a social equilibrium, in a natural equilibrium in terms of pressure and temperature. And clothing is how anybody gets there, right? So here's my advice to you. The first is to not be afraid of clothes. Because one of the consequences of especially this thing is that clothes aren't something that hides you, not only. Clothing can be something that shows you. Clothing can be not just a mask, but a display. It doesn't just hide your insides. It can also display and show who you are. See, when I look at someone naked, I can't really tell what's unique about them. But when I see them dressing in the clothing that they chose, I can tell. You're showing your inside externally when you dress. You know, speaking of the choices that I talked about earlier, I've recently found a joy in dressing in the clothes that I chose that make me look good. 
there's a kind of weird, perverse joy in looking good. It's kind of like vanity. And I think we would be mistaken in thinking that vanity is always a bad thing. It probably is an excess, but I feel like personally I have thought so badly of vanity that I have in, uh, ignored certain very important parts of being human, right? And when we do that, we can feel the joy in being what we look like and looking like what we are, you know? Displaying that and enjoying that. And, and, and have you thought about see, meeting yourself on the street and seeing yourself? What would you see? What would you think? What would you feel? Maybe you'd be shocked, but I think more likely you'd be pleasantly surprised since we're often really hard on ourselves in ways other people aren't. So clothing is a way of bridging those two things, the way we are inside and the way we look outside. And in that same sense, clothing is a way of doing that physically, bridging between how we are inside and what we look like outside. Are we dressed warm enough? Are we dressed cool enough? Are we dressed warm enough socially? Are we dressed cool enough socially? Are our internal and external temperatures being regulated in the right way? That's what it means to be human. That's what it means to be a mammal is to regulate our body temperatures in relationship to the environment, both natural and social. We're warm-blooded, not cold-blooded. Can you feel that? Can you feel your blood? Have you ever felt that? The feeling of blood rushing either toward or away from your fingers? Clothing can help with that. It can help you feel comfortable in your body. It can help you feel more like yourself, feel more like what you look like and feel like what you look like is more like what you are. There you go. So remember that. Remember that you are beautiful. No matter who you are, and no matter how you look, really, because you look unique, and uniqueness is beautiful. Emphasize that uniqueness. Bring it out. Make it look good. And that can look good in many different ways, depending on who you are. Emphasize who you are. Embrace it and uh, emphasize it. Take care. My name is Christian Swenson, and I'll be back soon. Uh, have a good day, and have a happy new year.